Securing the Epicurial Service Registry UI and API, Part 2. In Part 1, I show you how to secure the registry's user interface. And today, I'm going to show you how you can actually secure the registry's RESTful API via our HSSO configuration. And then I'm going to show you two applications two Kafka applications written in Quarkus. One is producer, which produces Kafka messages, and the other is a consumer uh, application, which uh, consumes the produced messages. And I'll be using an FO schema. And these applications will be using the schema registry to validate the data produced. Now, just a few words about the Quarkus producer and consumer applications. I want to keep them as simple as possible. So there's only one uh, Java file for, for the producer and one for the uh, consumer. And I'm using Kafka and a, per, and a peculiar schema registry with security managed by uh, single sign-on. I'm not going to use any of the Kafka-specific Quarkus extension to keep everything simple. So you can see that applications, Epicurio, uh, Keycrook, or Single Sign-On, and Kafka, they're all running on OpenShift. However, my Quarkus applications producer and consumer are running outside of OpenShift. It's running on my local machine. So why do I do that? Because I just want to uh, show you that, uh, well, Kafka applications can actually, uh, well, outside of OpenShift can actually access all the, this uh, Kafka cluster running within OpenShift. And normally, this is how developers work. They just run their applications on their local machine during the development phase. And that is what I'm doing. Now, let us look at the demo. Today I'm going to show you a feature pack demo illustrating the use of the Epicurio service registry playing the role of a Kafka schema registry. The demo involves a Quarkus Kafka producer and a Quarkus Kafka consumer. The producer and consumer talk to the Kafka cluster to publish and receive messages. They also talk to the schema registry to send and retrieve the schema that describes the data model of the messages. Now, let me start the demo. I started using a script. Now, let me just start the producer first, and then I'm going to start the consumer in another terminal. So you can see that the producer is producing a new message every 15 seconds. So you can see the Consumer is picked up because I stopped it last time and I run it. Uh, it didn't pick up the uh, 26 and the 0. So today it picks up the, the one left over in the uh, Kafka topic, which it hasn't actually processed before. So you can see that 0, 1, 2, 3. So it just uh, simply, the consumer is just simply uh, showing the message content. By this time, you're probably thinking, is that it? I thought you said uh, you were going to show us a feature-packed demo. I don't see any special features in this demo. Now, at first glance, this appears to be trivial applications that don't warrant a demo. I would say that it is actually a feature-packed demo because many of the features are working behind the scenes, which you don't see. The interesting part is that these features are set up using configuration instead of uh, writing code. Let me explain. 
let me just switch to the uh, program editor or IDE. First of all, the producer application is actually using a SSO client service account with authentication and authorization to send receive messages using the Kafka cluster and access the service registry. The apps use the simple authentication and security layer or SSL. It uses its OAuth bearer mechanism, which is our FC 6750 for authorization. And it also uses the uh, JAAS or OIDC for login or authentication. You can see the code actually there, the setting up of this is in here. So you can see that it's using SSL and it's using the uh, OAuth bearer mechanism. And then I use the uh, JAS uh, login module to log in using the client service account ID and also it's a secret and then pass on the uh, URL, the actually the endpoint to obtain the token. So once it got the token, it can use it to access other services like uh, the registry uh, and also the Kafka cluster. In this demo, I'm using the Apple schema, so which you can see in here. Apple uses JSON for defining the data types and protocols, as you can see here, and serializes data in a compact binary format. The build process that I'm using uses Maven plugins to actually generate code based on the schema and then include the generated code in the build path. Let me show you the POM file. So this is how to generate the code. This is how it's set up. So it's specifying where the source directory is and where the output directory should be. And then the next part in is actually to uh, include the generated source in the build path. So this is how I can use the generated source in my application for the producer. So the generated source of this schema registry is actually, you can see it in here. The message schema is called simple message. So what it produces is a Java class called simple message. You can see that uh, it got lots of functionality in there and also it incorporates or includes the uh, schema itself in here. Now, with the schema registry uh, in place, the producer, before sending the data to Kafka, talks to the schema registry first and checks if the schema that is intends to use is available in the registry. If it doesn't, for, for example, in this case, it doesn't because it's the first time I run it. So mm -hmm. if it doesn't find the schema, it will register the schema and caches it in the schema registry then the producer is going to uh, serialize the data and send it to Kafka cluster topic uh, in a binary format, depending with the unique schema ID in the header. Now, when the consumer processes a message, it will communicate with the schema registry using the schema ID it got from the message header and deserializes it using the same schema. If there is a schema mismatch, the schema registry will throw an error, letting the application know that it's breaking the schema agreement. Now, let us look at the script that I used to uh, start the demo. So you can see that I actually have to pass it, have to uh, uh, define a number, one, two, three, four, five, nine parameters in the environment uh, as environment variables, and they get picked up 
uh, as the properties in the uh, application topography file of the uh, two applications. And then I'm going to, and then I'm running the uh, packaged uh, Quarkus application. So let's look at these required parameters in turn. The first one that I need to pass on to the application is the key code host. So this is the first part of uh, how to access the host uh, definition. The second part is the key code RAM registry, is, is RAM name. And then the key code client ID, uh, which is registry API, and also the key code secret, which is uh, this generated number. And then I have to uh, include the uh, a trust store with its password, and then the topic, and then the bootstrap for the uh, Kafka server. And last but not least is the, actually the uh, register URL itself. So one thing that you uh, may find interesting is that I have to include a trust store in there because I'm using HTTPS or SSL and TLS uh, protocol to encrypt communication so that attackers can't steal your data. SSN, SSL slash TLS also confirms that a website server is who it says it is, preventing impersonations. The letter requires a trust store to check the validity of servers for self-signed certificates, for self-signed certificates, which I'm using for the OpenShift uh, uh, cluster. So without using a trust store, the application will get an exception, uh, which is a, a sunset path builder exception. Uh, the message will say that unable to find the valid certification path to requested target. So once I put in that uh, trust store, that, that uh, error will disappear and everything will work. Uh, by the way, I'm not going to show you how to get the uh, trust store uh, CA from the site website, so, but I will put it into the uh, description below on how to do that and how to create a trust store. The next thing I want to show you is the uh, registry itself. Let me log in. You can see that after I ran it, now you have, it has added this simple message uh, artifact in there. Right? So the first time, if it's not present in the uh, registry, it will register it. In this case, it registered this simple message. The next time when the same producer runs, it will check with the registry and this time it will find it so that it will not going it's not going to register again so we just uh, using it start using it now I show you how the application uh, looks like now let us look at the, what you need to do on SSO to make this all happen now let me switch to the uh, SSO the admin console so right now I'm in the registry uh, realm which is uh, what I specify in my application. So to set up the integration uh, to well, with uh, the application so that the application can use a client or service account to access uh, Kafka and also the uh, service registry, I need to create a client. I've actually created it already, so I'm just going to show you what you need to configure in the client to make this all happen. So the one that I'm using, the client I'm using that, that I created for the integration is called Registry API. So if you click on this one here, you will notice that the important thing is actually the uh, client protocol. So you get a number of choices, but the one to use is Open ID Connect. And for the access type, because we're using SSL, you must select Confidential among the three, right? Don't use bearer only, use confidential. And then you have to make sure that the service account is enabled, is on. Authorization enabled or not, it does not, I, I find it that doesn't uh, really matter whether I set it on or off. And also uh, the service account secret you can find in the credentials tab. In this particular case, this is the uh, secret 
you save it somewhere and then specify in that uh, uh, environment variable uh, before you run the application so they can pick up the client's secret. And remember, uh, last time we, well, when we configure the uh, registry UI, we mentioned that uh, it uses three different roles. I need to default, well, uh, create these three roles in here. So it's SR admin, SR developer, and uh, uh, those are the only two I created. UMA protection is, uh, is inbuilt. So you must define one, you don't have to define both. If you decided you just want to use SR developer, just uh, define that in there. You, you only need one, you don't need uh, two of them in here. And then in the scope, you will see that you have uh, like uh, this included in here. So all you need to do is just assign one. So if you only define SR developer, you should select it from the available roles and then click on the add selected and then it will uh, be put into the assigned roles. So that means when you log in, it will, it will have the role of SR developer, which means that you can create uh, uh, artifacts, you can retrieve artifacts and so on. And then you click on the service account role. So make sure that one of them, you don't need uh, both, uh, say SR developers is in there. So uh, that's all you need to do. I almost forgot. In order for everything to work, you have to configure the schema registry or the service registry uh, appropriately. Now select the project that you are uh, installing the uh, registry and then click on the deployment. Select the deployment for the service registry. Click on environment. Make sure that you have auth enabled set to true. Keycock room set to registry. Keycock client ID set to registry-api, which is the uh, client that we have defined. And also you must have role-based authorize enable set to true. So I pointed all this out uh, in my previous video. I just want to make sure that you remember to set this. And that's it. Once you set this, it will relaunch the image and then everything should work fine. Now you just witness how I secure the registry's RESTful API. And also you've seen what the uh, producer and consumer Quarkus Kafka application looks like and how they're using the Alpha schema to validate the data produced. So by uh, watching both part one and part two, you should have a complete secured uh, epicurial service registry. Hopefully this will help you in setting up the epicurial service registry in a secure manner. Thank you for watching.